So today we're gonna show you a bunch of different crafts that you can do with your kid at home during the summertime. We bought all the ingredients and items of these crafts from the Dollar Tree for under, it was under $20, it was very cheap. And you can reuse some of the elements like the food coloring and the little plastic animals and glitter and beads. So you don't need that big of a list. You can get all these items for under $20 and some of them you might even have in your house. The first one is super, super fun and easy. All you need is a bucket, two bags of rice, some colorful animals and some food coloring. So you start by taking the rice and dumping it into the bucket. And then you can take whatever food coloring you wish and you pour a whole bunch of it in and then mix it in. And then when you're done with that, you can just put your little animals in. This one works on tactile desensitization, scanning and visual skills development, hand-eye coordination, color identification, you know, a whole bunch of things. Some kids really do prefer more like hard tactile things. So if you do have a kid that's like that, this might work for them. You can also do imaginary play. You can take the little critters and make a little storyline of them. You can work on color identification, you know, have your kiddo put all these little critters in this box and say, okay, pull out, you know, the yellow one, pull out the red one, pull out the centipede, pull out the praying mantis, and you have hours and hours of fun. This one's a super easy and fun craft too. So all you need is some baggies, hair gel, glitter, food coloring, and googly eyes. So take your baggie, open it up, fill it right up with some hair gel. Then you can take your googly eyes and put some in there, however many you'd like. They're great because they're flat and that's really what you want with this craft because you don't want to break the baggie. I put in some green food coloring, just a couple drops because that's all you really need. And then I put in some blue glitter so to just create that visual contrast and that visual stimulation. Again, this is another awesome craft for color identification. You're just gonna, you're gonna mix the bag together just with your fingers, which is a great way to really work with, you know, motor planning. Um, sometimes it can help with executive functioning because it's giving kids a task that they have to complete and it's a very fun and easy way to do that. Our occupational therapist here would call that ninja therapy because it's, it's helping the kid with, you know, hand strengthening, finger dexterity, all that fun stuff. This one's fun because you can put all the googly eyes maybe on one side of the bag and have them race to the other bag. You can almost play like a battleship style game with all these googly eyes and have them almost fight each other, but gently, because you don't want to break the baggie, because <laughs> gel will get everywhere. So be careful and gentle with this one, or maybe just you know keep an eye on your kid while they're playing with it. But it's a great way, especially for your sensory seekers, to just have some flat tabletop game that you just make with a couple of things that you might even have at your home. This one is the most tried and true fun craft for kids with autism or sensory processing disorder, or you know, just anyone, it's fun. So it's a sensory jar and you need some glitter, some creatures if you wanna put them in there, food dye, some beads, and some styrofoam beads. I used a whole bunch of different kind of things so the plastic beads have some weight to it so they hit the bottom of the jar and make that audible noise. And then the styrofoam beads float to the top so they look cute when they are all thrown together. We used some clear glue also in the water so that it would slow down the glitter when you shook it so that the glitter wouldn't just immediately fall to the bottom of the jar because it is plastic and plastic is heavier than water. So the glue kind of helps it keep that buoyancy. This is an optional step, you don't have to do it, but I recommend it just because it gives that beautiful slow input and helps the kid calm down a lot more. We really went crazy with the glitter on these. We spared no glitter because what's a sensory jar without glitter, you know? And it's one of the most fun things to look at. Sparkles are the best, what can I say? Great for that visual input. We also, for this craft, you can see that there's some Gorilla Glue on the table and that's to help seal the lid of the jar nice and tight. You have to wait, I think about 24 hours for the jar to really fully solidify with the Gorilla Glue, but it won't leak at all. So that's definitely great. But if you have an impatient kiddo, you can just get you know a little plastic tiny jar from the dollar store and screw the lid on and hope that they don't unscrew it and get sensory stuff everywhere. So this is a great toy for a lot of different reasons. It can help with fine motor coordination from picking up and putting down the jar or bottle, hand-eye coordination, and you can use the sensory calm down jar when your kiddo's overstimulated. It's a great way to just help them focus their mind and their bodies on something that is just visually stimulating. You can do imaginative play by creating a story around your little scene. Mine are some dinosaurs, maybe stuck in the ocean, I don't know. 
Just give it a good shake and look at how nice and slow that glitter is moving. One thing I did notice is that you have to almost overfill these to make sure that there's no um, bubbles. See, because there's kind of like a lot of bubbles in mine, but I filled it up with a lot more water so it was almost overflowing and it looked way cooler. And you can spin it and it looks just magical. And then yeah, you can fully see like how nice and slow the glitter moves just because of that clear glue. And I really do recommend going that extra step, but it's not necessary. This one is maybe one of the most fun and simple crafts that you'll do. All you need is some shaving cream and food coloring. And this is super, super easy. You just pop a couple drops of whatever food colorings in there. I wanted to make mine purple. It didn't turn out purple, but that's okay. You know, it's fun either way. Sierra made hers a beautiful color of pink. I think she even put some glitter in hers. You can do whatever you want. This is fully customizable, but you just, it's good to help mix it up. You know, if your kid wants to cook in the kitchen, but is kind of a big mess maker, this is a good place to start. I am a huge sensory seeker, so I just got in there with my hands and I started squishing the foam through my hands and that was a really great sensory experience and calm down experience for me. Just because I love the way that the soft sensory input feels and, you know, dollar store shaving cream smells really nice. <laughs> Another thing that our occupational therapist Emily mentions here is that if you have a big sensory seeker but they don't really like bathtubs, she suggests putting an entire wall with your shaving cream in your bathtub. And then you can just use that accordingly and use it as necessary so that your kid's, you know, a little bit distracted by playing with the wall. So that's it. Let us know which ones you try and we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>